G'day folks, this is my uh, project turntable that uh, I acquired uh, after someone no longer was with us. Um, powered by a 9 volt AC adapter. Uh, what I've discovered is, <coughs> uh, so this, get that off for a sec. This is the turn arm that came, or the stylus came with it, it was an order font. My sight not so good, but let's use the phone. One of those, OMB 10s. Anyway, okay, slightly worn. <clears throat> Very worn, I guess. Uh, yeah, anyway, it wasn't as worn when I got it. I just used a lot of it. Because uh, I do tend to play a lot of older records. Um, as you can see here, I've got, you know, 45s. I've got a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of different ones. I do like to listen to some older music. Uh, when I'm not listening to records, I usually have the old, uh, audio cassette running, or if I'm not running that, I'll have the, uh, audio CD. Just depends what I'm in, what mood I'm in at the time, or even if I'm not using any of those, it'll be, uh, the old, uh, FM radio. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, the old FM radio here. <clears throat> yeah, there's never any good news, so we don't worry about that. Anyway, this little uh, video is more just about swapping out even a good sounding stylus, generally, when it's new, I guess. I mean, my, my records are never cleaned. Uh, okay, they're sort of cleaned. I, I, I do the wet rag method. When they're a bit grubby in the old washover. Um, <clears throat> but, so you know, I've already pissed off most of the audio file groups. But I swapped this one out for a uh, AT3600 stylus because you could get these off, uh, well, AliExpress, eBay, whatever. You can get heaps of these and they're not expensive and they're still the same moving magnet or whatever. Uh, cartridge <clears throat> so they're still based on the same concept as these uh, they require a preamp which this has built in um, still can't work out to get into 78 mode not that I've ever got anything to play on that uh, but anyway uh, yeah so uh, you know it, it, these here are a direct rewire or plug-in for these um, in fact they use the same sort of oh we'll just Turn the turntable off for a sec. So I've just sprung that off the other side of the thing. Uh, but they use the same <clears throat> the same spacing for the head shell. Um, and you just kind of, you pretty much, you, you get the uh, the stylus part here with the cartridge part here, which can, between the two of them, contain both the magnet and the coil that makes the micro grooves in these. As they vibrate, they go through here, they get picked up, kind of like a microphone picks up your voice. So pretty much, it's the same concept. Amplifying one of these is the same as amplifying a, uh, uh, a basic microphone. So yeah, so it takes the, takes the wiggles, which would normally be, say in a microphone, a, your voice against a moving diaphragm. Like say if you're talking into a plastic cup, like a, for the Americans, a solo cup. If you put your, the cup against your mouth and go, uh, and you feel the back of the cup, the back of the cup will go Bzz, with your voice. Anyway, this is doing the exact same thing, right? So the little wiggles in here are just sound, which is pretty cool. You can actually, <laughs> sidetrack, you can tell with a record where the noisy parts and the, not necessarily the quiet parts, but the more, um equal parts are you know where there's sort of more uh melodic music uh or if it's music with just instruments playing you can tell the difference between music and voice um or whether it's something just noisy like this section here um yeah it's pretty cool anyway yeah so on here is just a direct representation of audio uh if you zoomed into it you would see a uh, opposing grooves going 
wiggle, 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 wiggle. And that would be like one millionth of a, se oh, you know, like such a small section of a second of music going, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Because that's only like five hertz, right? But yeah, anyway, so on there is your music. There's your, really does a shit job of picking up. But yeah, on it, inside of the groove, because there's one groove on most records. Starts on the outside, goes from the lead-in, works its way through, and as it spins, it draws the pointy bit of this, which is upside down it, the pointy bit of that is your style eye stylus because it's one of them anyway so that one's warm that one's a newish one now as a <clears throat> dare i say 40 year old man my hearing's capped out at about 15 to 16 kilohertz now um i can do the frequency sweeps i Used to, when I was younger, I could hear the sweeps as they went up from about 50 or 60 when they became audible above subsonic, uh, all the way up to about 19, about 18 to 19 kilohertz before they'd roll off and I couldn't hear them. Um, and that was on, that was, that was after just 16 bit stuff. Because if, if you tried to do the audio frequency test on 16 bit, uh, once it goes over about 20 what's yeah so 44.1 so half of that is 22 and a half once it goes over that it quantifies which means you start getting aliasing which is noise so you start hearing these sort of stair stepping as it goes up if you're hearing that doing your sound test on a 16 bit uh, audio thing um you're doing it wrong um because you've actually gone if going outside of the capabilities of 16-bit audio and then once it starts quantifying without a noise shaper um, or without a hard filter anything here after 22 and a half is just crap it's just uh, artifacts but yeah no I used to be able to hear up to about 19 kilohertz when I was about 20 ish 21 22 I think the last time I ran a uh, frequency sweeps to see if I could hear it uh, but no these days it's definitely um, 16 kilohertz probably about my upper limit and that's just a fact of getting older because um, our um, here, the way our ears work everything's grown as we've gotten older and some of it's gotten thicker so it's hardened up a bit which means we don't have the flexibility in our eardrums and those little hairs in our ears, uh, which, if you work industrially um, with loud noises, the little hairs in your ears that help with the high frequency stuff die, which is why you should protect your hearing. And I've, I've done a pretty good job. I haven't done an exemplary job uh, of protecting my hearing, but I've done a pretty good job. <clears throat> I avoid loud noises where possible. Um, but yeah, I still don't have high frequency response above about 16 kilohertz. Which, you know, as you get, this is one of the things, like, the audio file st sort of stuff sort of focuses on accurate representation of audio. That's great. But the people who have the money to afford this equipment now are usually older than the people who can actually hear the representation of that audio. Um, I can't hear above 16 kilohertz. Um, geez. Uh, or maybe, maybe I can. I mean, look, it, there might be maybe a push to 17, but I doubt it. Um, but, you know, whether you, look, it, when it comes to audio, it's, does it sound good to you? Or are you listening to the actual equipment itself? Um, yeah, it's one of those weird things. But no, I uh, look, what I've found, even with my limited capabilities in the audio file community type thing, I mean, uh, my systems, I mean, I, I inherited this. 
and I'm keeping it going by just keeping it going. I am missing the anti-skate thingy that goes over here. And I have I am researching how to recreate that because it needs to be done. But um but yeah, no, I found swapping this one out for the uh for the Audio Technica cartridge, I can honestly I can't tell much of a difference. Um uh, the Audio Technica does seem to ha because it sits um, flat. So if I'm playing a, uh, one of my records, um, look, I can't call them vinyls because some of the mine are polystyrene. Um, uh, but yeah, if I'm playing a record, like I've got, I've got ones that have got bits of warpage in them, right? Um, <clears throat> and I do notice that because the Audio Technica is flatter, that sometimes on some of these it can, um, it, it went with the warped ones. You can't. It can hit the ridge. It can actually scrape on it. But I found if I, <laughs> oh, this will upset the uh, the audio peoples. Um, but I found if I get a, a a record and put another one, yeah, it put the one with a bit of warpage just above it. Um, it's enough to lift this one up, so it doesn't have that issue. So I have to get. I have to say, if you're playing, if you're playing records with a little bit of the old. Uh, Warp and warp and matic happen here. One of these will help you because it does have a tendency to ride because it's got so much more clearance to the back end of the Pokebit. It does have the ability to ride up and over warp discs, right? Um, so there is an advantage for that, though. <clears throat> on not warped discs. I don't see any, or I can't, I don't hear a difference that would make paying extra for fancy cartridges, um, you know, sort of worthwhile. I mean, look, they, these are not ceramic carts, so they are using moving magnet. They go through a preamp stage in here before um, heading off up into this unit, which I have running into the because I don't own a mini, mini disc player and it's the only spare input it's got, I've got it just running into the mini disc into here, uh, which gives me my, because it's it, it's line output from here, so it's line output levels. Uh, the output from here is sort of governed by the AC power supply that feeds it. Um, I don't, the, I, I believe these are designed for 12 volt AC. Um, I was running it off of a this one, which is a 16 volt AC, which is a little bit too much for it because it does cause this to overheat, uh, and then you get horrible buzzing. Although in saying that, the preamp stage in this is actually quite happy with the 16 volt. I find it's a little bit deeper base, so it's got a little bit more uh, output control versus the 9 volt that I'm running it on now. Uh, I'd, I'd never got the original supply with this. So I've had to make do with what I had. Um, but I have noticed, I mean, speed can, I, I do think this needs to be on a 12 volt supply. Um, but these tests between the two styluses, uh, or styler, I don't know, um, were done before going to the 9 volt AC <coughs> supply. So any issues I've had since swapping them out and not a representation of, well, what I'm including in this narration, I guess. But yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't think there's too much difference between these. Um, not anything I can hear personally. Uh, I do have some newer uh, records um, and some very limited, or I was the first one to play them. Uh, though I did buy them when they weren't so popular, therefore not so expensive. Like, I've got... Pardon me. I've got a Dell's 21 album on record. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I, same with that. I can't... Uh, I mean, I can't compa direct compare with these because this one's actually worn out. But I can't tell too much difference. Um... From, so see it, it's an indirect comparison because when this was in good condition uh, I had the 21 uh, Adele's 21 playing on it uh, playing it on this I don't feel like <laughs> I don't feel 
like I'm missing out on anything. So, uh, with the advantage that these are quite cheap on the stylus end to replace, um, which works well for me. I mean, I only do this casually. I, I, I enjoy my music. I don't really care what format it's playing on. Um, to the point where, I mean, I've got records and like this, even though it's, you know, warped, I even, I, I, I still enjoy the music on here. I've got 40 fives of varying qualities. Um, and like I showed before, I've got, um, you know, compact cassettes. I don't like, I don't mind listening to cause I've got heaps of those and you can buy, you can buy albums on cassette for next to stuff all because people don't want them and they're still being produced in uh third what do you call them uh third third nations uh you, you cheaper places or uh like indonesia and places like that still produce audio cassettes um so i've got a quite a few i even got the full bg's double cassette everything uh, which cost me like 20 bucks. Uh, but you can buy cassettes for cheap. Uh, audio CDs. I love audio CDs because they just sound really good. Um, and you can, same deal. They're not sought after like records are. Um, so you can buy albums on these for next and next. Um, I bought the full two CD Titanic set, which on vinyl or record, uh, with the James Horner, the full intro thing um or what do they call it i really need to find this except uh the case for that but yeah the you, you can get the double vinyl set of this and it's like nearly a hundred bucks i bought the two cds um because the whole kit's been out forever um cost me like 15 bucks delivered for the whole lot and you're not going to get much if you're not going to get any difference really even, you know, say on, even on this equipment, you're not going to get a big difference between, <clears throat> you know, plastic discs down here and audio, audio CD, uh, except for, I guess, the price. Audio CD is just so much cheaper to buy anything on. Uh, and if you think about it, the CDs and the records came from the same sources in this instance. So you're not missing out on anything running the audio CD. Um, <clears throat> or you might be missing a little bit of the old surface noise and that sort of thing, but you, you've got to hand it to the CD for being, you know, what goes, what goes onto the disc comes out of the disc pretty much. Where with this stuff, it's so reliant on the differences between different styluses, um, how it's set up. I mean, I've got this sitting on, um, little bubble wrap bits of plastic, uh, bubble wrap wrap just to get rid of the surface noise walk around the house um stop the skipping because i don't run it at a very i don't run it at a heavy uh weight i don't have an official weighing device i could ask my brother to borrow his though he doesn't use his for records as such um yeah but you know um but just just by the way it behaves it feels like it's running at about three three and a half grams um from what I've seen on YouTube, it's, 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 you know, it's sitting about where it needs to be, but <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, they turned into a bit of a rant that I wasn't expecting. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, music's good. You should just enjoy your music. Don't worry about what you're playing. I mean, look, well, you don't worry about what you're playing it on. I mean, the difference between these two generally I couldn't, there's next to nothing in it, unless you do a side-by-side -side A, B with spectrographs and all that sort of crap, but they are just, in, in most record players, they are a direct swap, so if you wanted to go all fancy with one of these, you can do it. I mean, I give it to it, it's bloody light, there's no weight in that. <clears throat> um, so I'm, I'm guessing it's mostly just plastic in that. Um... But I don't, yeah, look, I don't know. I mean, as long, I, I, my guess is, as long as when you replace whatever with whatever, that you set this thing so it's not squishing the ass out of your record when it's playing, I reckon you'll be all right. 
And there is one advantage, and this will really shit off the uh, <clears throat> audio files. Don't do this when they're watching. Let me get that one off. This one here is just a little bit tight. Got to help him out. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Don't do this to your good records, by the way, because it's really bad for them. Yeah, let's put this one up. The advantage to the flat top is when you're playing your... Okay, so yeah, I'm playing that like too slow just to stop copyright. But you get like, you find you get records when they're really scratched or really bad quality. Um, or one, I'm going to do a video on at some point to do with um, plastic migration because I want to show what that looks like. Um, but if you find that you, you, say if you're just wanting to get the audio off your record, um, like to um, back it up or record it or whatever, especially if it's a, oh, not so if it's a rare one, there's people that do that. But you can do something like, say if you just want to add a bit of weight to it, Use a, um, oh, 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 come here, you, come here, uh, so you can get your, I, sometimes I, I'm in Australia, so I can use money, uh, but I use, sometimes use a five or a ten cent piece, and just sit it on top, just add that tiniest bit of extra weight, just to get the, uh, get it to play all the way through, so I can dub it to my machine. <clears throat> to back it up because I do have the occasional uh, record here oh uh, I suppose that's a pretty good bad or bad example I guess <clears throat> this is the partridge family stop that in case copyright goes oh but you know what you're doing this is the partridge families I think I love you right see that waviness there that is plastic migration. That's what happens when you store these in polyethylene bags without the cardboard between the uh, the uh, the record surface or the playing surface and um, and the bag that they live in. The BBC, I think, because they've got an archive of all their uh, records and things, have just have finally worked out that this is actually a bad thing that happens. But this, this vinyl, mi the, uh, plastic migration is a really, really bad thing. I mean, you can see here, if you have a look around the surface, you can see where it, there's a bit there where it was a bit wavy up here, like that, like that. And especially along that section, like there's a really hard line there. Fortunately, with this one, it's just on the tips, uh, on the tips of the uh, groove as it goes around. Uh, so it can be, uh, it can still be played and duplicated or copied uh, with a little bit of uh, assistance, with a bit of weight, um, just to try and get the tip of, uh, yeah, I don't know, where's my thing? try and get the tip of the stylus a little bit deeper into the groove so I can get into the V uh, a bit better so that it floats a bit better. You can you can do it with adjusting your weights as well, but you know, it's what it is. Anyway, that's it. I haven't got too much more to add to that at the moment. Um, but that plastic migration is a really big issue, especially with these older records. Um, seems to affect the vinyl ones more so than the styrofoam ones, but then the styrofoam ones or the styrene ones, you really shouldn't be playing on much anyway, because uh, most of those are just going to be ass. but it is what it is. Welcome to records. Everyone's got an opinion, just like everyone's got a bum.